No, I mean, we did look originally at doing that at a round bar, but it was the cost of it. Yeah, because you've got to mill off all of the, those yeah. extra bits of material. Yeah. And it was just the cost of the aluminium, because the price of aluminium has gone up so much this year. Well, in the last 12 months, it's gone up it's been like three times what it was. Mm. Welcome to another Swarf and Chip sponsored by Interco. They're a supplier of special steels and alloys. They've got 17 million pounds worth of stock in Cheltenham. But enough about that. We are here at Mintdale Engineering in the materials shelf. And if, can you kind of imagine what machines they've got with material like this? They've got brass, steel, alley, uh, like a copper here. Of quite a short, short length though. Is it short bar feeders? Is it long bar feeders? Oh, well, you, you're probably smart enough to know. It's mostly short bar feeders, but it's not just lathes they got here at Mindale. Um, we're going to find out from Jason exactly what Mindale do and have a look at a really old machine. My God, that's probably the oldest Siemens control I've seen in my life, but it's not this control we're interested in. We're interested in the setup here on this shearer. Now, how long has this shearer been on the shop floor and what parts is it making, please, Jason? Uh, it's been on the shop floor for 22 years now. Uh, had that jig on for 22 years. I was going to say it's the oldest setup as well. This machine has had the rotary table, the work holding, and you can tell. I mean, you you you, you loosen off the block with this like with a spanner on here. You can see how many times the spanner is knocked into yeah. the the work holding. That I mean, what what part is it, and how many do you think you've made over the past 22 years? Over 22 years, I think we've made about well, probably about two million. Two million parts in 22 years. That is absolutely amazing. Yeah, amazing. And what what are the parts going? What are they for? Gas regulators. Gas regulators. Now that to me doesn't really mean too much. So let's go and have. Let's continue. Let's go. Let's keep moving on. Um, the part is actually right here, and gas regulators. But they're not just any old boring gas regulators. They're actually. What do they get? Where do they go? They're going cellars in pubs. Yeah. So if you've been in a pub, and these are all in the UK, right? All in the UK. Only UK. Only them. Yep. Nowhere else. Brilliant. So if you've been in a pub in the UK, then what are the chances you've probably been drink, drinking from some fluid that's gone through one of these? Ninety-nine percent. I think 99% okay brilliant yeah, so if you you'll be drinking from a drink will have gone through well not gone through but your gas will have been yeah, the gas will have gone through one of these which is yeah. absolutely fascinating two sorry 22 sorry two, two million, million of these you might have made yeah. it's absolutely amazing um, you're also making them the same kind of parts on a fat robot drill here a, a large yeah. and a medium yeah um, we've got uh, a brand new machine over there which yeah. is uh, a billy machine we're going to look at that um, right at the end because I'm interested in um, how our viewers might think it will be made today versus what, how it's been made or how it was yeah. designed to be made 22 years ago. Yeah. So if you can guess um, how we're making it today, which is completely different, a completely, completely different kind of machine, completely different work holding, um, then keep watching to find out how we'll finish on that on that machine over there, I think, Jason. Yep. Yep. Um, and the next next thing we're going to go and look at is all the sliding heads you do. Um, and we've also got a really old machine to go and look at over there. So let's go yep. have a look at the sliding head. Okay. And what's just caught my eyes is this citizen machine making these lovely little brass parts here. And these actually fit inside the regulator. There's a valve seat. Um, so you don't just make single parts, you make kits as well. What yeah, about we assemblies? Do. What, what other kind of parts do, do you make on site here at Mindale? We make medical assemblies, quite a, lot, quite a few medical assemblies. And we've got a yeah. medical assembly like yeah, this. That's what, one there. what is this? Yep, that's your capsule, all that. That's a valve. When you plug your mask in, uh, sorry, you probe in, gas comes out. And when you see you probe in it, you make sure the gas is coming out properly. And you've got two parts. It's actually a press fit uh, tool. But yep. you don't just press fit parts. There's a lot of soldering involved and, yep. and, and have, kind yep. of yep. permanent assembly as well, permanent not just screwing stuff yep. in and pressing yep. it in. Yep. Brilliant. So we'll have a quick look at um, we, we'll, we'll see that on some footage a little bit later. Yep. Um, but you've also got a really old machine over here. Let's walk over and have a look at the really old machine. Because you've got a, a really good mix of kind of brand new tech and old tech. Um, why do you invest in brand new tech? Just because it's, it's quicker. Mostly. And why do you need it to yep. be quicker? Just to keep up with competition, absolutely. or lead the competition, shall we say. Yeah, absolutely. And, and um, brand new tech, this is not. This is an old Nakamura Tony. Yep, you said this is. was originally actually in Japan. Is this a Japanese was, import? Yeah. Yep, Japanese import, this one. Really? So some people would import yep. cars because they, they're still a, 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 <laughs> a, a, left, a, a right hand drive, yeah, a left hand drive. Yeah. But people, I've never heard people importing machines from Japan. No, it, well, yeah. And this is almost as young as you, isn't it, Jason? It, yeah, it's nearly as young as me. <laughs> Absolutely. And um, what do you still need it for? Mostly for simple work, where having a sub spindle that or twin turret won't make any difference whatsoever. You know, just, just turn on the mate, just one spindle. Yeah, just yeah. one off little billet loaded yeah, stuff. Yeah, it doesn't need to be too automated. Yeah, no, just sim that's simple stuff. Yeah. It'd be wasted on doing them on. 
Uh -huh. That's it. And still the Nakamura Tomos from 1986 are still going strong. But here we've got another different kind of machine. You've got loads of different brands here, Jason. We've got a Dugard sliding head. It's not now, a sliding head. Oh, sorry, it's not a sliding head. It's a fixed head. Fixed that slide. So ah. the, main, the main spindle done with. Oh, okay, that's fascinating. So you've got a fixed head on the left-hand side here, but it looks like a, a sliding head with all the fixed tooling. So yeah. how, what else the benefit? How does it work? It's just, it's just very quick at doing what it does. It's not a very, it doesn't do a big, it's not a big machine. And we only, mostly use brass on it, but we have done, we have done stainless on it. We have done, I've just finished doing actually, doing a stainless job on it. Brilliant, so stainless, brass, you can do any kind of machine, but it's a, a oh, kind of sorry. a mix of fixed and sliding head. Yeah, it is like that's what you call it. Yeah, that's, that's quite confusing. Okay, I'll, I'll have to try and get my head around that a little bit later. And now we're going to yeah. move on to the last machine, the brand newest machine here at Mintdale. We're going to find out exactly how they make these parts completely differently to that to that yeah. shear on that we saw at the start of the video. And now the last machine we're going to be looking at today is the brand new Billy. It's a twin spindle, twin turret machine. But this is actually making square parts. Just Why did you put a square part on a lathe? Just because we had to. Because you had to. I mean, you've had a look inside. You can see the. The, the op 10's just finished, it's on the sub spindle, the, op, the, the raw billet on the left is waiting. And it's come in, it's it an extruded square really part. good thing to do, it was that. Did it, and, what, and, and when you had the idea, what did you think? What did you think, oh, that's genius or that's never going to work? No, I thought it'd be genius. Obviously, Bound Jason, a man, like, a man of your calibre, obviously it's going to be a genius idea, but I see a few machines um, will advertise they can, they can bar load square bar, but not many people, I come and go and see the machine shops in the UK, not many people seem to actually do it. No. No, I mean, we did look originally at doing that at a round bar, but it was the cost of it. Yeah, because you've got to mill off all of the, those yeah. extra bits of material. Yeah. And it was just the cost of the aluminium, because the price of aluminium has gone up so much this year. Well, in the last 12 months, it's gone up, it's been like three times what it was. Mm. So it's not just the fact that you could do parts quicker on new technology, it's the fact that you can change the way you do it, you can choose yeah. extrusion rather than bar, yeah. and save, save material that way. Yeah. Yeah, that's fascinating. Very versatile. Uh, we preferred that to a vertical machining centre just because that's far more, for us, it's a lot more versatile. Being a subcontractor, that's a lot more versatile for us. Absolutely. And when you start to bring in more bar feed, more um, parts catching and parts management systems, um, have you started working uh, over, overnight and weekends? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it works. It works overnight. Well, this won't quite work overnight. I mean, parts catching is not big enough, but yeah, it does work a good few hours after we've left at night. No lights on. Brilliant. I love to see the evolution of what happened on the shear on there. We've got a rotary table and loads of parts making 20 off at a time to yep. a machine making one off, but you thought, well, that'd be surely that's a lot slower, but actually the cycle time's quicker, it's, so you make yeah, more and more. Just, in one yeah, go. It, just, it just works. Nobody here lights out. Brilliant. Brilliant. Applying new technology here at Mindell Engineering in Chester. I hope you've enjoyed this fourth and chips. I certainly have.